While I'm preaching, if the power of God hits you and you want to shout, jump up and shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you want to oppose us and be critical, go out and leave. Amen. <laughs> You're welcome either way. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to be clear about stuff. My brother said, that's the clear. Ray Charles can see that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe the Lord gave me a word for today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mal or Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus is ministering some parables to people. When we talk about casting out demons. Jesus did it more than anybody mentioned in the scripture. Because he needed disciples, he had to deal with the demon possessed to get those people freed so they could become disciples. Getting someone set free from demonic power whether possession, oppression, or just irritation or illness or whatever. It's to make that person useful in life. It's not just to say, well, we cast the devil out of so-and-so and you never see him again. It's to make that person useful, not only in life, but to the kingdom of God. Mary Magdalene was part of that group of women, not men, that were at the empty tomb first. And he said Mary Magdalene was in that group out of whom he cast seven devils. You mean one of the women ministers? He cast seven devils out of them? Amen. I believe there's some women got seven devils. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. I believe there's some men got seven devils. I got to go on. I feel it kind of drifting a little bit here. <laughs> Verse 43. When the, <clears throat> when the unclean spirit <clears throat> is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest. And the word dry means empty. And where it says seeking rest, a demon can only be comfortable in a person. You remember the story of the island of Gadara? Jesus went there and a man came running up and the demon started talking, what do you have to do with us before our time? And he told them to be quiet. And they said, well, since you're going to cast us out anyway, let us go into this herd of swine. There were like 2,000 hogs there. And they ran off a cliff and committed hogicide because a hog couldn't stand for the demon to be in him. Only a person will be content to let a demon live in them. And we're going to change that narrative today. And it said he, he goes through dry places where there's no prospects. He's seeking rest, but he finds none. Verse 44, then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. He's talking about that person. He's talking about that person. And we're, we're going to have church today. Okay. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. It's like someone that has a house they're selling or they have a house that they're renting and they put a lot of time in it doing repairs or doing upkeep or painting and new flooring or carpet and they've got it all, all dressed up. It's ready to show. Okay, you with me so far? It's ready to show. And he goes back to that house and he sees it's not only ready to show, it's ready to be reoccupied. 
If God set you free from something, you better put something in its place. And we're going to talk about that. You're going to put something in its place. Otherwise, the devil that you got set free from, God delivered you from drugs or alcohol. That's always convenient. Uh, You better put some living water in there. You better put something else in there. It's like when I got saved, I was 19 years old. And I'd been to church all my life. I won perfect attendance awards in church while I was going to hell. Amen. Some of y'all doing the same thing. Y'all are going to be upgraded here for too long. Some of you. But I knew when I got saved, I had to go to church. I had to make a choice. Otherwise, the world pull was pretty strong. And so I, I, I leaned that way. And so when I got saved, I made it my mind, I went to Sunday school, I went to Sunday night, I went to Wednesday night. Then there was, a, there was quite a revival took place, and there were several other people got saved, and I didn't know any of, any of them before, but we connected, and we'd, we'd fill up a car, and we'd drive to Waycross, Georgia, or Brunswick, Georgia, or some other towns, you know, Ludowice and Hinesville, and some were 15 miles away, some were 60 miles away. We went to church every night for about six weeks. I went to tent revivals. We, we went all over, Wayne. We just, and you said, did you get anything out of it? I did. <clears throat> I don't remember much about it, to be honest with you. But I sure established a, a pattern and a habit of going to church. I remember that. And I've only missed a handful of Sundays in the last 50 years. And I, I, I'm not trying to to guilt you into coming to church. I mean, if, if I thought it would help, I would. Uh, but you have to desire that. Anybody that got set free from something in the Bible, they came to Jesus. They came to him. And those that came to him got what they were looking for. They received from his mighty hand. Now, last week it was uh, our attendance matched the temperature. It was like 39 below zero. and We had 39 people in church. But Jason, you drove 35 miles or so just to come, about 30 miles. I was giving you five. But you, you brought your kids to church last Sunday. So I, I really appreciated that. And uh, those of you that say, well, it was just too cold. I, I understand that, but you were saying that last summer it's too hot. Hmm. There you go. So the house is empty, and he goes, and he takes with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. He said, even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. This generation, because of the amount of people, more devils can be around. This generation is the worst in history. It's the most demonic possessed, the most devil influenced, because he's got more people to influence. It stands to reason. It's the most demonic possessed, oppressed time in the history of the world. So when we we look at that, we need to be the church that sets things right. We need to be the church that gets people set free from demons, and we've cast demons out of people this year like nobody's business. Last fall, man, it was, it was powerful. But those people have to stay in church. They have to get connected. They have to get in the Word of God. They have to stay in their Bible. Uh, <clears throat> I remember uh, Jim used to come to church with us, used to bike with us, tall Jim. <clears throat> you know who I'm talking about, and some of you remember but Jim shared a testimony one Wednesday night. He said, I need you to pray for me. He said, the Lord set me free from meth over two years ago. And he said, I've been free and clean for two years. He said, but not a day goes by that I don't desire it. I want you to learn from that. He was being very honest. And to my knowledge, I ran into him every now and then, and, and he's still clean. But he was being honest. You might come out of the world, but there will be some kind of a draw to try to pull you back. Unless you fill it up with the word of God. That's why David said, your words 
have been my counselors. Solomon says, your words have been my counselors. And what makes me the nice guy I am is the word of God. Because it's like fences. It's hedges. I lean too far to the world and that word of God pops up. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. So I know I can't really minister effectively unless I just love the Father without loving the world. So i got to get away from that. You stand with me. I'm not preaching yet. This is an introduction. Seven more spirits. We're talking about eight demons. If I may present it this way, you don't have to watch horror movies. You've got eight demons camped around your property all the time. You've got eight demons looking in the windows all the time. So what do you mean? They're looking in the window to find an opening. They're looking in a window to find the empty spot. Amen. Amen. What's in your yard? What's in your house? There's a lot of rooms in a house. It's a kitchen, restrooms, entryways, bedrooms, living rooms. What's in your house? You came to Jesus. You made some professions of faith. And some of you have been serving God a long time. What's in your house? Is, is the enemy watching, looking at your house, and won't be long, that room will be empty. Won't be long, this room over here will be empty. Won't be too long, this, this, the whole property will be up for rent. Be up for habitation by someone else. Hmm. I'm glad you're listening now. Let me, let me just go over here. I'm, I'm going to, I want to follow the leading of the Spirit, man, I, I told Natalie, I said, man, I wish I could have had recorded how I was preaching to myself yesterday. <clears throat> she said, you should have recorded as moving too fast. Seven evil spirits. I, I, these, these are mine. I didn't get this off of YouTube or Facebook. Seven evil spirits. One, one of these is the, I can't get a head demon. He'll work on you. Why is other people being blessed and I'm not? I tithe and give, but nothing happens. And that's the second demon. The nothing good ever happens to me, devil. <clears throat> then the third one, I call it the I'm stuck in the past demon. Man, some people's memory is so historical. So their, their memory is so strong, they have no vision of the future. Marriages get in trouble because they have no vision of the future. They look at what's going on right now and it's just handicapping them. Amen. And so it's, it's real important to cast that demon out of past memories. Then the fourth one, it's the I'm sick demon. There's a graveyard in Key West, Florida with a headstone on it that says, I told you I was sick. The sick demon, as we could put under that heading, like maybe A, B, and C, just A, the sick demon is the demon of excuses, why they can't get better. Hmm. Is it supernaturally quiet in here? And then, number five, I call it the envy demon. The envy demon, that critical spirit. When, when criticism comes in your house, when a critical spirit comes in your house, that envious spirit comes in your house, just critical, your faith won't work. Because a fountain can't give forth good water and poisonous water. So you need to get rid of that critical demon, that envy demon. Then number six, this is a bad one here, is the anger demon. The scripture says, see, that as soon angry deals foolishly. It also says that anger is bound in the heart of a fool. This anger demon is a controlling demon. It's a control freak, sort of a narcissistic demon. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. 
somebody else comes along that maybe looks like they're a little better, then it just activates that anger demon. Now, if I may jump here a little bit, all of you that are uh, ministers and teaching and preaching, stand up. The Bible calls you to be teachers and preachers. I expect you to be teachers and preachers to the place you'll be better than I ever thought about or dreamed of. I pray the power of God works in your life and you understand these things. If you want to preach and teach the word of God, preach and teach the word of God and nothing else and preach it with all of your heart and let the chips fall where they may. So what if it offends somebody? The truth usually has to make someone mad before they'll realize what they're doing. All right, now you can sit down <clears throat> unless you want to keep standing. That controlling, that controlling thing. Number seven, here's the fearful demon. The scripture says the fear of man brings a snare. Fear that you might be doing something wrong. I would say if you're doing something, praise God. Yeah. Pastor, what if I do something wrong? Well, you probably will, but at least you're doing something. Yeah. You can't ever correct a mistake if you never do anything. Yeah. Amen. The first time, I know Joe and... Jake and Tony and maybe some others have been in martial arts. Jason, where are you at? Jason's, there he is. He, he got in martial arts and get any bruises yet? Yeah. I was going to see if that lion demon was in you, but no. <laughs> First time I ever went to a, to a class, I saw this big guy throwing kids around and young people around. I thought, I want to, I want to spar with him. And, uh, Mr. Jones allowed me to do that. Keep in mind, I had no training. I knew nothing. I was enthusiastic. And I, he said, go. I ran across the mat. Next thing I know, my feet switched place with my, my head switched place with my feet. And I didn't even know how I landed on my back that fast. I thought it had to be an accident. So I jump up, I try it again. <laughs> the same thing happens. I was enthralled. I was hooked, and I wanted to learn. But people say, well, I remember a guy asked me one time, said, how long does it take before you don't hurt anymore? I said, you're in the wrong sport. <laughs> it will hurt every week. <clears throat> but I see these, these demons, this, this fearful demon. Here, here it is. Here's, here's this one. The fearful demon is a whiny demon. Whines about everything. Whines about it all. Whines. Whines about where they're living. Whines about who they're married to. Whines about the job they have. Whines about the people they work around. Whines about the church they go to. Whines about the pastor. That's a good indicator. I said, Neiman. You know, they whine. <clears throat> Don't be a whiner. Don't be a whiner. Amen. So, Pastor, some things just, just go on. Some things just bother me. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that and try to help you out there. Cast them out in Jesus' name. If you're a child of God and the demons are bothering you, cast them out. Why are you playing with them? Why are you letting them hang around? Why are you letting them do all this? And I'm trying to watch my time. Listen, because the devil will feed you the bread of sorrows and the bread of contention. He will give you bitter water to drink. Sour wine made from sour grapes. He will feed you wounded emotions and damaged souls. He will feed you the wrongs that have been committed to you and imprint them in your memory so much that's all you, you can recall. You know the word of God, but you've been feeding your soul these damaged emotions and wounded spirits and wounded things so much. You got out of the word of God where your spirit gets fed where you develop a strong spirit by the word of God, and you start re getting into that. I remember years ago, uh, one of the uh, Hispanic gentlemen gave me a, a Bible with Spanish on one column and English on the other. And, and I was sitting home alone one Saturday evening, and I, I wanted to learn more. And so I started reading out loud the Spanish column. Then I'd look over so I'd know what it was, but I was reading the Spanish column. Now, my human... Mine did not know what those words were. But my spirit knew. And it's the spirit that gives life. 
It's the spirit that brings the anointing of the Holy Ghost on the scene. And Manny, I kept reading those verses in Spanish. And listen, anybody that speaks Spanish would have laughed at me. But I was speaking them, and the more I read them, the more I got anointed, and I just caught myself, my voice started getting louder. And it got stronger. And I was sitting on the edge of my chair. I didn't have an audience, but the Holy Ghost and those demons looking in the window, but the angels of God, thank God, were on the inside. And I kept reading that word. Woo, I got happy. Then I got blessed. I didn't know a thing of what I was reading, but my human spirit that controls me, drives me, was strong by the word of God. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to get rid of the junk in your house and put some hidden treasures in your house, just walk through your house reading the word of God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord Jesus. If the devil wants to feed you the bread of affliction, have you drink the water of suffering? One of the prophets said there's a famine in the land. It's a famine for hearing the word of the Lord. Now, we were just talking a little bit before church today. And I, I just, uh, reading a little bit, uh, Natalie was sitting there at the table and just reading some from Psalms 112. Can I, can I read just a little bit? I just, just want to read to you just a little bit. Praise ye the Lord. Verse 1. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments or his word. His seed shall be mighty in the earth. And I just got to thinking about all our children and all our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And I thought, Lord, this is mine. This is ours. Our seed shall be blessed in the earth. Our seed, my family, my family for generations are going to be blessed in the earth. We've got three generations here today. I want to tell you, my family is going to be blessed. Why? I fear the Lord. I honor his word. Listen, whoo, glory to God. Just imagine if I was reading this in Spanish, I'd still be happy. Mm. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. His seed shall be mighty in the earth. His seed, his seed shall be mighty in the earth. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory to God. I believe they're going to have the top spots. They're going to be accomplishers, achievers. They're going to be blessed, highly favored, blessed when they go out and blessed when they come in. And whatever they put their hand to will prosper. This is the heritage of the Lord's servants. Glory to God. Verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Y'all should have said, I take it. Lord, deliver us from a slow spirit today. Mm. That's that ninth demon. His righteousness endureth forever. Until the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. For he is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man shows favor and lends. You know what I like about that verse? You got to have something to lend something. Oh, glory. You got to have more than enough for you. You got to have more than enough, plenty left over, your cup running over, if you're going to lend to somebody else. Hey, is anybody getting a hold of that? My cup runs over today. I'm a cup running over kind of guy. I'm a cup running over kind of family. I'm a cup running over kind of generation. Glory to God. With plenty left over, more than enough, super abundant, prosper to be a blessing, and blessed to prosper. Hallelujah. Listen, you might run out of money one day, but you will never run out of the blessing which means you'll never run out of money. Amen. Glory to God. Now, whew. Just the anointing leaking out of me all over. A good man shows favor and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion and judgment. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Pastor, I got a bad report the other day and don't know what I'm going to do. What were you doing before that? Were you trusting God or trusting the TV or the Internet? We have a friend of ours went, went through, I, I mean, had, had battles with cancer. 
her husband would put her in the back seat and drive her to hospitals all over the country. And it, it, it was bad. It was, it was really bad. It was on the edge of death. And she told me one time, she said, Pastor Dave said, the Internet and people looking up diagnosis for their illnesses is one of the greatest tools of the devil. Because you'll look up something and, yeah, I got that symptom. And I got that symptom. And I got that symptom. And I got that symptom. Go to the Word of God, see what it says. I, I told you a few weeks ago, I was at a, a New Year's Eve service one time, and Bishop Bradford was this guy's name. One lady testified, said, my child got sick. We rushed her to the hospital, and everything's okay. Praise the Lord. Just want to just give God praise. And he said, uh, why didn't you pray about it first? I thought, oh, that's a different generation there. I remember Sister Mary Demily. Y'all remember Sister? She was an old saint of God. I mean, her old had calluses. <laughs> she, she was hard of hearing and hard of seeing. She was about 85, 88 years old when I met her. And she needed to ride to church. And so we'd go pick her up on Sunday, take her to church. Pull up to the house. You pull up to the curb and get out of the door to walk up to her front door, a little old tiny house in the south end. You're hearing the devil, I have kicked you out of my house and out of my life in the name of Jesus. She was just battling. <clears throat> She'd be in church. Couldn't hear. Couldn't see right in the middle of the church. Now, I was still trying to put it, keep it between the lines as a young pastor. She'd just stand up and start singing right in the middle of church. But she told me one time, said, we went to church at a little church off North 16th Street here, a little building, and she showed me a picture. And I, I could tell by that picture why the devil didn't bother that crowd. There was about 30 people. The men had on dark suits, white shirts, and dark ties. All had their hair combed, and the women had on black dresses. Most of them had their hair in a bun. Y'all don't know what one of those Pentecostal buns is. These women had long hair. It's wrapped up real tight and pinned. If the Holy Ghost ever got to moving on them, they start shaking that head duck. Those pins going to be flying. <clears throat> but she said, back during the Depression, said we couldn't afford doctors. So nobody could afford doctors. People would run out of groceries. They'd come to church. We'd pray. They'd get healed. They'd have a need. We'd pray God would meet the need. Oh, you can learn something from that. Whew. i got to read to you some more. He'll not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He's given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. And he gnashed with his teeth and melt away, and the desire of the wicked shall perish. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you right now, you get some of that in your house. Let the devil look in the window. He'll back up. <clears throat> now, I got, I'm not real orderly with my notes. But I got to thinking about my house ain't empty. Devil comes looking at your house. What's he going to find? You got to make sure your house is not empty. Swept and garnished, ready for habitation. There's somebody already living there. Hallelujah. And I got to looking about and it, and it's not empty. The book of Proverbs says the tre there's treasure in the house of the godly. Psalm says wealth and riches shall be in his house. We're not chasing money or stuff or prestige or power, but we're chasing God for his glory, his fire, his fellowship. Hallelujah. I believe the power of God wants to operate in your life so much, you'll have not only a blessing in church, you'll be blessed when you go home. You'll be blessed when you get up in the morning. You'll be blessed when you go to work. You'll be blessed at work. You'll be blessed on the way home from work. You'll be blessed when you get home. Your home should be a sanctuary. Hallelujah. 
You might have a, a hell of a day at work, but when you get home and you hit the key in the door or the garage door opener and step across the threshold into your sanctuary, the Bible says, when they greet you with the kingdom of God message, let there be peace in that house. And if you receive that peace, there will be peace in that house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Shiyama sisi sombriki. Hmm. Bambli kirosene. He said, I will cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Proverbs 24, 4, by knowledge shall the rooms be filled with all precious and pleasant treasures. Oh, Lord Jesus. Can I, can I read to you some more? Yes. Praise God. I feel like family get together at Christmas. My granny Leggett used to take Christmas. She'd read to us from the Bible and read. <clears throat> Grandkid, we don't want to sit around and listen to that. It was Christmas, time for presents. But my dad was a rather commanding figure when I was small. <laughs> that there wasn't any, well, he's just misunderstood. But by God, he won't misunderstand this. Whack! <laughs> Those of you who don't know what a fire poker is, I can explain it to you later. <laughs> just for knocking ashes around and knocking sense into. <clears throat> yeah. The te- we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I just got going through, I just sit there and just stuff just popping up in my mind. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the house of the living God. We are filled with the Spirit. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, He starts filling us with good things. He filled me with joy and peace by the Holy Ghost. He filled me with righteousness, joy, and peace by the Holy Ghost. My mouth is full of good things. My mouth is filled with His praise. That's a good time for you to practice the Word when the worship team is worshiping and singing. They're giving you an opportunity to fill your mouth with good things that praise unto God that will drive back the enemy. You get in the Old Testament and study the praisers and the psalmists and the minstrels. They went before the warriors. They were singing praises to God, singing praises to God. And oftentimes, the warriors never had to sling a rock, shoot an arrow, or throw a spear. Why? Because God went before them in the praises of his people. The Bible says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God inhabit the praises of his people. For the praises of God are a sure thing and a great fortress today in our world. Learn to fill your mouth with something. Learn to put some good things in your mouth. When the devil comes against you, go, not today, devil. Not today. Though the temptation be great, I will serve him. I will be faithful to him. Like Job, though the skin worms destroy my flesh, yet in my flesh shall I see God stand in the earth at the latter day, and I will praise him with my whole heart. Glory to God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. The devil ain't wanting to see that in your house. I'm getting to where I want to start preaching now. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with holy boldness. The first time I ever preached, I almost passed out. Wasn't in the spirit, it was just abject fear. And these, these Methodist ladies across the street, they had a Methodist church in that church of God, Piney Grove Church of God, and had this Methodist church right across the street. <coughs> and uh, they were praying for me. I went to church early. I took off work early. I went to church praying, praying, praying. I thought that would do it. But I didn't study as much as, should, as I should have. And I'll tell all of you ministers, you study, and however much time you put into studying, you spend that much time in prayer and worship. You find out what the word says, then you find out how he wants you to say it. Amen. So you get a hold of that. Anyway, they came to hear me. They prayed for me all afternoon and said, we felt so bad for you. We spent all day praying for you too. (laughs) I was pleading and praying, pleading and praying. And uh, at the end of the service, the pastor came up and said, here's the tape. It was a real, real tape. 
said, would you like this? I said, destroy it. And one of those little ladies come up to me. There's two or three of them, dark dresses, hair in a bun. They look out for bobby pins, you know, flying around. She come up to me and goes, Brother David, you need to pray for God to give you holy boldness. I go, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's starting to kick in. Whew. Listen, I get to looking at this. I see these, these spirits that come in. I see all these things working on people today. As a pastor, I see that. I see jealousy. I see envy and strife and unforgiveness. I see how the flesh, lust, and all these things are looking for partners. They're doing these things. And it is the devil's looking in the house. You know, like, you go to my mom's house, she had everybody's picture. She had people we didn't even know his picture on the wall. <laughs> she did. Now, who's that? It's so-and-so. I, I never met them. Oh, yeah, they sent us pictures. We've got them on the refrigerator. Couldn't open the door of the refrigerator. So many pictures on it. You know, that's how grandmas are. They got pictures all over the place. And uh, that's like, you know, you, you get free from demons, and you got pictures of your family back up here, your church member family, and all this kind of stuff. And, and the devil looks at us, oh, you got, I can't get in there now. They got, but then after a while, if something goes on, you get offended, and you turn that picture around. You get offended at that first, you turn that picture around. You get offended on your job, and you turn that picture around. So the devil looks in the window, he can not see anything but empty frames. Mm. You know, looking around, he don't see any furniture because you can't stand to be there anymore. So you go out and run the streets. Go out to your old, your old haunts and haints and things you used to do. Hang out with the crowd you used to hang out with. You got free from that, but you go back. Mm. How, am I doing okay so far? All right, all right. And then when the devil sees that, he goes, hey, they're making room in the house for us. The whole house ain't empty, but we can get in the kitchen. And we can feed them the bread of sorrows and the bread of contention. We can let them drink sour wine when they could be drinking new wine. They could be drinking fresh wine. Now, when Jesus has your house, oh, when Jesus has your house and you get set free, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory in your house. So what kind of furniture is in the house when Jesus sets you free? Well, one of the first things came to my mind, Angie, is he sets a table for me. Not just for me, but in the presence of those eight demons looking in the window. In the presence of my enemies. He sets a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In a house that used to be messed up and empty, he started filling it with a table with all kind of good things. The bread of life, the living water, the hidden manna, all these things are on that table. And any time I sit down to eat, I shall be refreshed. I shall renew my strength. I will learn to mount up with wings like an eagle. I will run and not be weary. I will walk and not faint, for I am a child of God. And he gives his beloved the things that he needs. Why? You say, well, Pastor, I never prayed for that. While the prayers are forming in your mouth before it leaves your lips, the answer's already on the way because his eye is on the sparrow and his eye is on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hall Pastor, I need my needs met. Get a hold of Jesus. Just get, start praising him. But I tell him what I need. He knows what you need. Just start praising him. Start praising him. Glory. I, I see this. Whew. Table filled with all good things in the presence of my enemies. <clears throat> There's seats of honor and position and favor. Paul told the Ephesian church, for we are seated at the right hand of his glory. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Proverbs says he will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. Is there peace in your home? I want there to always be peace in my home. 
Because what if you, you and your wife are arguing? I want our home to be a place of sanctuary on our worst days. Hallelujah to God. Say, what, what about the other rooms? Well, he's provided me with water, a living water, a well of living water, a river of life that supplies the well that will never run dry. Oh, hallelujah. I, I see these things. He, he provided us a bedroom. The scripture says, when the righteous lays down, their sleep shall be sweet. And Greg brought that up to me. Uh, I was thinking about that after you mentioned that. He said, you ought to pay much attention to it, but you notice you've been sleeping longer. And I think we overslept twice. I can't remember when that's happened. I'm usually up, up and down anyway. But, but when you're rested and refreshed. See, when fatigue comes in, faith goes out. War out people don't wage war very well. But when you're rested, there remains a rest for the people of God. Glory to God. That's why Jesus said, come to me, you who are weary and heavy burden, and I'll give you rest. Right in the middle of the battle. Right in the middle of the battlefield, he'll give you rest. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Those old songs of the saints going on. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 8 said, In peace I will lie down and sleep. Praise God. Now, I just got to thinking about this. The walls look like some of the grandma's house and this, this house you're going to, your spiritual house. I got to look at this. You theologians can check me if you want to. There's uh, hanging on our walls, there's birth certificates. My mom and dad had one, you know, when I was born, October 26, 1951. When there's a born again one, I was born again, I'll be in November 1970. There's birth certificates and there's adoption papers. When I got born again, right next to that date is my adoption date. I was adopted by my Heavenly Father. And right next to that, it just keeps getting better because next to the adoption papers is a deed signed over to me that declares that by reason of the new birth, I now have an inheritance with God Almighty and with the Lord Jesus Christ as joint heirs in his kingdom. Praise God. Whew. And the last will and testament he's given me to keep right here. And everything in it lets me know I'm part of a heavenly enterprise. And pictures of family in here. Got pictures on the wall. Pictures of our church family. Pictures of my natural family. Pictures of some saints that have gone on to be with the Lord. Some pictures in there. And there's some, there should be some pictures of the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints. Because there's some things in your house <clears throat> should be how he calls those he can use. You look back at the, at the time, I'm 19 years old and, and just rebellious and I didn't want to serve God. And I remember uh, got got married uh, the same week I graduated high school and uh, two weeks later moved away to a little community called uh, uh, Glenville, Georgia, about 35 miles away. Was a, got a job at a Chevy dealership, and I thought, oh, good. I'm away from my parents, and they didn't want to make too many long-distance calls because it cost 50 cents. And uh, I thought, my granny will leave me alone. Going to church Sunday, son? Granny missed you in church. And it's like when they said granny missed you, it was a dump truck load of conviction <laughs> and guilt piled up on you. He said, I just invited him to church. Yo, you opened a door from heaven that was battling hell. And remember, oh, good. I'm 35 miles away and they can't bother me. One of the first major accomplishes 
that I did after I graduated high school is I quit going to church. And so just a few weeks after I moved to Glenville, Georgia, I get a knock on my door. And this young, I can't even remember his name, young pastor, pastor of the Church of God in Glenville, Georgia. He said, are you David Leggett? I said, I am. He goes, your granny called me. <laughs> and said, you might be looking for a church. And something about it, I connected with this guy. And he invited me to church. I went by myself. I went on Sunday night. I think I went Sunday morning and Sunday night. Well, I'm used to it. And so I went. I don't remember what he preached about. I don't remember it being that great or earth-shattering. But I went back. And I kept going back. Why? Because of granny. <laughs> and mom. And don't give up. Don't ever give up. <clears throat> David said, though I flee from your face to the ends of the earth, behold, thou art there. <laughs> your children might be living out of state. They might be living out of the will of God. They might be living in opposition to you. But I got to, I got to preaching about the prodigal son, too. I was preaching about all kinds of stuff yesterday. Oh, man. There was even a mouse in, in that room. He's filled with the Holy Ghost now. <laughs> I got to think about the prodigal son. And I thought about, you know, he, he's away. He left home. He took all of his money. He left. He went away. and he, he, spent it, he spent it bad. He spent it on bad living, on bad friends. And he wasted his money. He ended up living in a, in, a, in a facility where they fed hogs. It wasn't just a hog pen. It was a facility where they fed hogs, which was totally against his Jewish background. And so he was feeding these hogs, and he said, my father's servants fare better than I do. I will arise. He said, and he came to himself. Listen, the first time you come to yourself, run to Jesus. He said, I'll rise and go to my father's house and ask him if I can just be a servant because at least I'll eat good. And so he goes to his father's house. And I got to looking at that. The father sees him approaching because he's sitting on the porch looking for him. And not only that, he runs to him and he fell on his neck and just hugged him and kissed him on the cheek and, and just hugged him and he just cries out, my son that was lost is now found. And he yells, get the fatted calf ready. He didn't fatten the calf he had the calf ready. He had the steaks on the hoof. They just had to get busy and get them on the grill. And he, get the fatted calf ready. Throw a party. Invite everybody. My son that was lost is now found. And so not only that, clean him up and put a new robe on him that makes him part of the family. And not only that, put some new shoes on his feet. He's going places. Not only that, Put a ring on his finger that signifies this is our family. This is our family emblem. This is our family signet. Whatever he puts down in the wax of that ring bears the authority of the family. I want to tell you, child of God, your daughter, your son, they may be in the pig pen. They may be running from God. They may be drifting from the Lord. But fear not. Your father is waiting for them. He's watching for them. My God, he's getting ready to turn some things around. And they might be going down the street one day, driving along, headed to Walmart with not a care in the world. And all of a sudden, the messenger angel from God, here's a director from the Father, said, now is the time. And they just go and begin whispering in their ear and directing them. And it doesn't matter how they resist our God. Let them be born for a specific reason and on time. He's an on time God. He'll bring them in. He'll bring them in. He'll bring them in. But you, child of God, spend days of preparation just like the father did. The calf was fat, the robe was dry clean, and the ring was already sized. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God. Oh. Whew. 
Can I preach a little bit longer? I was going to. I just, it helps when you agree with me. God calls those that he can use. He qualifies us by giving us gifts and abilities. He empowers us with Holy Ghost anointing. And your faithfulness will do more than your abilities ever do. Here's one of the things that's wrong with a lot of churches today. When they're looking for people to employ, they look at a person's abilities instead of their faithfulness. God can, the Bible says God can always bless faithfulness. Because you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. What is that verse saying? Because you've been faithful over a little bit, I'll promote you to more. I'll promote you to more. I'll promote you to more. This is a year of promotion for some of you. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. I see you progressing in God's plan for you. And I, I preach this and I speak this over you. I declare you stuck no more. The chains that held you back are falling off now in this service. If you will catch a hold of that, it will be your day. You, you should just shout out, God, use me. Those of you that are wanting to go higher, say that with me. God, use me. God, use me in this day. Hallelujah to God. Whew. Say this, I receive my open door. I'm making course corrections. And receiving clear directions. So I love my church family. Hallelujah. See, Pastor, what about this house? Whose demons are out there looking in the window? Well, what a, what a home security team God has. Can I see my phone real quick? And I need a microphone too. Hallelujah. Let's see if I can get it on here. Part of his security system is the bloodlines that mark your property. People have heard it said that he can't cross the bloodline. No, he can't. You make sure it's not grown over. You make sure there's no weeds on that. That home security is the anointing of God on our lives. And there's angels on watch. I want, to try to, I want to try to get this going if I can. Uh, let me get past this junk. Okay. No, that's not it. That's the blues. All right, we've got to go back again here. Hang on. I just got to looking up sounds of a sword being drawn. <coughs> Hallelujah. There's one other one I'm going to try to. Yeah. Turn it up. The Bible says that God placed a huge angel with a flaming sword out the door to the Garden of Eden that nobody could enter or exit. I want to tell you when the Bible says that we have a guardian angel, every one of you that looks to the Lord as Savior, you have a guardian angel. The Bible says your angel. That's how he describes it. Your angel. Your angel. In the Old Testament, Elisha's servant was afraid because he looked out the window and part of the Assyrian army was surrounding them. And Elijah, Elisha just prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he can see. Because when Jesus gives you eyes to see, you'll see what others can't see. He said, open his eyes that he can see. And he went back to look again. And it said there was an angel army surrounding the Assyrian army. God's army is not just there to protect you. He's there to not let them escape. Angels are on assignment today. Last Sunday, there was angels singing again. I nudged my wife. I said, there's more people singing than what we have here. Praise God. Then I, I see 
some things in our house. Sounds of worship. My house ain't empty. Is your house? We tried to have that put up on Facebook, but uh, Carter said social media would not allow us to use apostrophes in some of these words, so they had, how is it my house is not empty? I said, no, my house ain't empty. But there should be some sounds of worship coming out of your house. Not what's on TV or YouTube all the time. There should be some praise in my house. Mm -hmm. There should be some prayer and rejoicing in my house. There, there should be some pictures of Noah. And you can look at him and almost hear him say, my boat didn't sink. I built a boat and I was 70 miles from water. And everybody thought I was crazy until it started raining. Hey, I, I see Elijah standing alone. There's 850 people, religious people against him. There's probably that many against us today. See, Pastor, do you think there's a lot of people against you? I have no idea because I don't listen to them and I don't watch them. And I don't care. If you have an enemy, good. That means you matter. You're nobody until somebody hates you. I don't want to be a nobody. Stir it up. I, I, I see Elijah just... And he was, he was messing with them. He must have been a preacher. They were praying. They were cutting themselves with their knives. They were chanting. They were screaming. And nothing happened on the sacrifice. And Elijah goes, you boys got to go to the bathroom? That's what he said in the Lega translation. He said, go take care of the business. Had to go to the bathroom. Wait, some of your buddies stuck in the outhouse. Maybe, maybe your God's on vacation. Maybe your God's taking a trip. Said, what about your God? He goes, my turn. He prayed 63 words and fire fell from heaven and devoured the sacrifice. I wanna, you don't have to spend a long time praying. But listen, you need to be in position that when you pray, there's some fire involved in the answer. Hallelujah. And if you'll be the right kind of asker, there will be the right kind of answer coming your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I, I see David, and I see Daniel. And I see Daniel, like I look at him, and I can just kind of hear him shout out saying, the lion didn't eat me. He ate the others that got thrown in after me, but he didn't eat me, and he got thrown in first. They were already hungry, but he goes, the lion did not eat me. Why? Because he was God's man. Listen, if you're willing to be God's man in the lion's den, You'll be God's man after the angel shut the lion's mouths and bring you back out again. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fire didn't burn us. It was hot seven times hotter. And all it did was burn the handcuffs off. Whew. So they came out, their, their cloaks did not even smell like smoke. Ooh, hallelujah. My, my, my. My. Joel 2.26 said, You shall eat in plenty and not be ashamed. You shall eat in plenty and not be ashamed. Listen, child of God, if you're not eating in plenty, talk to God. If you're walking around with shame, if you're embarrassed about all kinds of things, get a hold of what the Word of God says, you'll eat in plenty. Be satisfied and you will not be ashamed. Hallelujah. I think God is speaking some things to the church today saying it's time for you to quit being ashamed. I've been feeding you. I've been spreading the table before you. But you keep putting other junk in your house and you let the demons in and you let them in this window. You let them in that door. Put the blood on the doorpost. Let the Holy Ghost watch over the windows. Let the angels of God encamp round about those that fear and love the Lord and who call his name and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Let God be praised and his enemies be scattered. Let God inhabit the praises of his people and his enemies be scattered. Let the people of God be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire today. So when they speak, they're literally fire breathers. They're the power of God in the earth. It may not look like much on the outside. It may not look, uh, this whole house might look run down, but I want to tell you something. There's some power left there's some power left. There's some fire in the house. Glory to God. Woo!